Hey everyone, episode 10, Gimme Mo Live Video Series Season 1. So, you'll notice that I'm actually not in studio. Um, that's because I've been so super busy. If I haven't been in studio, I've been in bed sleeping. How crazy is that? Um, so, I almost forgot that I had to do this video today. Um, so... We've spoken about a lot of things in the series from, you know, what are your studio, home studio requirements, some of the do's and don'ts when you are actually recording, how your success is actually has a lot to do with you your, uh, and your mindset, not necessarily what other people think. Um, hashtag make more music, that, that, that's the tagline, right? So people should just start making more music. And I'm actually looking now, I actually have to shave, but yeah, that's another story. So, what I want to speak about today is your comfort zone. And that comfort zone is different for a lot of people. Now, what do I mean by comfort zone? What I mean by comfort zone is, for example, some people are very comfortable producing or creating or writing a certain type of, 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 of music or a certain genre of music. Or it may be that somebody is very comfortable writing music or creating music when they are sitting up by the piano or if they're sitting just with a, with a book and a pen or they're sitting with a guitar or whatever it may be, right? Now, is this comfort zone good for you is it bad for you should you stay should you stay there <clears throat> pardon should you try and get out of that and a lot of people tend to stay in that comfort zone for a long time and my opinion is is that you should always be working on things that you are not comfortable with it's got nothing to do with uh, failing because I don't believe you actually fail at anything. You actually only learn. So if you are unsuccessful at something, you learn something new. You learn how to not do something instead of I didn't learn anything. So, for example, I'll, I'll give you my own experience. What happened to me was I got into a very, very, very comf uh, comforting bubble. So I had my little comfort bubble where... I was either doing pop music or I was doing R&B music because that was the majority of the artists who came through my doors, right? So people who wanted to work with me, well, they were making pop music or they were making R&B music. And, you know, I did some great work. We made some really good songs. However, where, we f where I felt personally was is that there was actually no growth for me after a certain point. So I'd gotten to a point where I could do these things with my eyes closed. But the moment I got a hip hop artist who came through the door or a folk artist or, you know, an artist who was doing something other than pop music or R&B music. Right. I was stuck. I was I sat there thinking, you know, I have to start from scratch. So. In that whole process, that learning experience, what it, what it actually made me realize was that I should actually be working harder on my weaknesses. Because if you're in your comfort zone, they, very quickly you learn that the growth, the growth experience and the, and, and the level of growth that you have is very, very short. So you get to a certain point where there's actually no growth at all. And what I started doing was I started trying to write and create rock music and alternative music, folk music, alternative folk music, um, hip hop. Yes, I do hip hop as well. Rock, alternative rock, um, some Kwaito, some house, uh, some dance music. And, you know, it, it, it actually, there was a lot of growth for me there because what I then realized was that there are elements from all of those different genres that you can sort of mix together to make 
a different genre sound even better. I mean, I was always comfortable sitting at the piano writing music. And it got to a certain point where I realized that nearly everything that I was creating had a similar sort of sound or feel to it. And I mean, that, that's what we, we, we experience in the industry now where we say, oh, I can hear that so-and-so producer did this song for this artist or this type or this specific writer wrote this song for this artist. Now, there is a good and bad to that again. You know, I'm not sitting on the fence. There are, there, there are positives and there are negatives. The positive is people identify with your music. People know what music you're going to... Uh, people know the type of music that you can create. And then on the negative side, it's sort of, oh, but I've heard this before. You know, how different is this to somebody else? For example, I, I can't remember the name of the song, but Katy Perry started working with... Was it Katy Perry? Katy Perry started working with a producer who did Lady Gaga's second album, I think it was. First album or second album. And the moment I heard it, I said, whoever made Lady Gaga's music made this. And when I checked it, when I did my research, I was right. So, what you need to do is get out of that comfort zone. Try something different. Try, for example, if you somebody who always starts with uh, a top line or chorus or a hook, try start, try, try something different. Try a different creative process. For me, what I did was I tried two things. Instead of sitting at the piano and just starting to write music, what I would do is I would create a piece of music, set up my mic, start recording and I would just try and freestyle whatever comes out. If I didn't have a word, I just mumbled something. Mumbled a tune, hummed a tune. Right, so that's the first thing I did. The second thing I did was I picked up a guitar. I started playing guitar, started putting some chord progressions together and I started writing music using a guitar. I started writing songs using a guitar. And what I found was that even though I could be using the same chords that I would have used when I was playing my piano, because it was a diff because I was using a different in instrument, it 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 changed the way it changed my creative process. I came up with different melodies, different um, different lyrics that I that I wouldn't use previously. I sure, yeah, and I still I'll still tell say that to everybody today. Hence this video. Um, so it, it, it made me write new songs. Um, I mean, the song that I released, uh, was it last month or the month before? The one called uh, Giving Back. That I wrote on guitar. As bad as the guitars are on that track, that's me playing guitar. Even though it sounds like I'm strumming the guitar with my left foot. <laughs> you know, I, I love the song. I, I love playing the song. Um, I remember just after my daughter was born, which is a song that... Uh, I'm, 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 I'm finally recording. It's taken me 11 years, almost 11 years to try and put that one together. Um, but the song is written, uh, I wrote it on guitar and it just gave, you know, a different feel to that song. And it's, I, I love it. Everything that I've done where I've gotten out of my comfort zone, I love more than the ones that I do when I'm in my comfort zone. Like just because the creative process is different. And then the third thing that I did was, yeah, the first one was recording straight up, freestyle, second one, guitar. The third thing I did was is that I bought a blank book, like a little journal. And what I used to do was one of two things. Either I got an idea for a lyric or, or, or something really cool, and I would just write down words, sort of like poetry. I would just write them down. And then on the flip side of the book, I would sit down and I would write a song with no instrument. It would just be me doing, uh, coming up with melodies and just singing the song. And, and what you find is, is that once you try all of these different things that you wouldn't usually do, that is outside of your comfort zone. When you marry everything, when you take what you've done, lyrics that you've written, uh, with melodies and then you go back to your comfort zone where you're sitting at a uh, piano like I like uh, I do 
you put the two together and you just come up with something totally different right what i also like to do is i like to sit down with a musician a guitarist a keyboardist wh whoever it may be what whichever instrument they play usually it's a guitarist and i'll just say play something this is the type of let's try something like this and i would just start writing or freestyling um, Ashur Peterson who's watching this now, he knows we've done this before, um, where, you know, we just play and we just, we just go with it. And, and, and it just makes everything so much more, in, in, personally for me, so much more rewarding because, you know, there's the satisfaction that I wouldn't have had if I, if I was stuck in my comfort zone and knowing that, you know, a plus B plus C plus D, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, everything is exactly the way that it should be. I know what it's going to sound like, it's going to sound really cool. So get out of your comfort zone, guys, Which, whatever that comfort zone is, only you can decide that. So am I saying your comfort zone is bad for you? No, I'm not. What I'm saying is your comfort zone will only get you to a certain point and your growth stops. So what you need to do is get out of that comfort zone. Try something different. Do something that you would not have done previously. Hey, Jared, how are you doing? Guys, for everybody watching this video, my great friend, uh, Jared Ricketts, just joined this video. His album is coming out soon. I absolutely cannot wait to get that album. And knowing me, I'll probably buy it on whichever digital platform it's on and if there's a, a cd out in the store i'll buy that as well so i can keep it in my collection such a great guy such a talented guy go listen to his music follow him message him go watch his shows one of the most talented guys that i know and then um hey my brother Avis just joined this now um he's actually one of three people who own a retro vape um they've actually spon sponsored um this video series i actually need to give them credit um if you don't know what retro vape is they are a vaping juice line company i don't know how to exactly say that so i have to do this right retro vape go buy this stuff so let's get back to music. So in terms of comfort zone, you need to get out of it. Whether, you, whether it's creating music, mixing music, mastering music, recording music, listening to music, that, that, that's a really important facet that, that people don't understand. What, what you need to do is listen to different kinds of music. I mean, for example, yes, you know, when I'm on my commute, when I'm in my car, wherever it may be, I'll be listening to the radio, just listening to what they're playing, the styles of music that they're playing, which types of songs are charting, etc. But I don't necessarily make music a lot of the time that I would want to fit into that chart. What I'm looking for is what direction is radio going into, right? And, 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 and you'll pick up certain things when you're listening to it and you'll say, hey, these guys are actually moving towards a more 70s sound or 80s sound or 90s inspired sound. So what you do is you need to try and figure out what the new, what the new sound would be. So what I find myself doing is I'm on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all of those online platforms. And I'm looking for all of the indie artists, artists that people don't know about. Whether they be in Europe or South America or Australia, Asia, wherever it may be. And it will be different styles of music. I'll admit that a lot of those, a lot of the sounds that I hear is not necessarily something that I enjoy listening to. But there are elements in there that I'm looking for that I can use in my productions that, that, that I'm going to do. Um... So yeah, guys, get out of your comfort zone. Try something different. It's not always good for you. It can be beneficial, but it can also be your downfall. Like I, 
I'll never forget years ago, um, Mr. Mellum uh, is actually the guy producing Jared's album and recording Jared's album. We sat down and we're just talking music. And yes, before anyone asks, Mr. Mellum is my cousin. He's always been my cousin. Um, we are what's it, first cousins, if you want to, if anybody wants to know. Um, so we were sitting down at a, at a family get together and we were just talking, you know, we talk nonsense. And then the topic of music came up and, you know, we were saying, we were talking about how we knew when there was a Pharrell production, or we, we knew where there was a Neptune track uh, or a NERD track, etc., etc. And we were actually speaking about how that's a good and a bad thing and how when we make music for artists or music for ourselves to be released commercially we we don't necessarily want people to know that it's us unless we make it blatantly obvious so for example uh, mr mellum uses a little tagline called mr mellum productions which you may have heard on certain artist tracks i've used a a gimme mode tagline uh, the Englishman use it, uses an Englishman one. Um, uh, I mean, Heron uses... Um, uh, it used to be, I mean, Haran. Now, it, I think he just does an A. Right? So, we do those things to make it blatantly obvious on certain tracks. But for the most part, and I, I'm, I'm very grateful for this, when people hear songs that are released commercially that I have done, People don't know that I'm the person who made it, right? The same with Mr. Mellum, the same with Amin, the same with the Englishman, the same with Valley, the same with Neil T, the same with so many different, so many different producers. And that's a, that's actually a good thing. That's a good thing because if people hear the song, they're going to ask who made that song. Uh, I'll never forget uh, my good, my great friend Kino Lee Hector. Um, one of his friends asked him about you know, getting into contact with the producer and he gave her my contact details. I met up with her, we started doing a song together and when the song was done, he play she played it for him and then he said, I didn't know Mo could do this. It wasn't a, a it wasn't necessarily a, a, a slap in the face to me, but it was rather the music that I've done before was either pop or R&B, for example. And now I'm doing something different. Right? And just in case you want to hear that song, I've started doing a new mix and master, which I hope to get to you guys by the end of this week. And I just realized that I promised you guys two songs by the end of April, which I was not able to do. Um... Yeah, so hopefully I can get you at least one song by this weekend as well, which is almost done, almost done. Um, and it's going to be the one that I said was a song that I always wanted to do. It's a cover song. Um, it's by a boy band, so I'm so sorry, guys, up front. It's, it's from a boy band, so I'm going to be doing that. I've recorded uh, almost everything. It's just basically the lead vocal that I need to do. So, why have I not released two songs? I've been busy, busy with so many projects. Um, I got a project that came through from Leah Hart and Jaxie Entertainment, which I submitted this morning. Um, Jason Jewister's EP I mixed. Uh, well, I'm busy mixing. Two songs are complete. I'm busy with the third one. There's three more after that. Um, I got a short film that I'm scoring. It's just been crazy, 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 uh, which I'm very grateful for. I'm, I'm not complaining at all. I'm very, very grateful for it. Um, the Englishman's interlude, the latest interlude, go check it out. It's on YouTube. It's on SoundCloud. It's on Facebook. Go check Ibrahim English or the Englishman, EBI Music. Go check it out. It's great. It features Tia Black. So let's get back to the music. So the song that I did that Kino was very surprised about. It was like, whoa, you know, I didn't know you could do this style of music, right? And, and, and that for me validated or validates my, my view on getting out of your comfort zone. Because the song that I did for Carmen was something that I wouldn't sit by myself and just 
put something together like that. She came in, she said, this is the style of music that I'd like to do. Let's do it. So some helpful tips on how you can, you can get out of your comfort zone. If you are a pop artist and you would like to do R&B, the crossover is very easy between pop and R&B in my opinion. But this is what I do. I create a playlist of R&B songs that are really good, that I like or that I feel the artist that I'm doing the song for fits into, you know, they sort of fit into the same category and I would that would be my playlist every day. Because what you need to realize is that a lot of times, subconsciously, you tend to create the type of music that you're listening to. I'll never forget, at one stage I was listening to, to, to Neo. And I was listening to all his albums and all the songs that I was making and creating and recording all had this neo wesk type of sound to it or lyric to it or melody to it. So what I do is I will listen to a particular type of music or genre of music and that influences how I create my music. So again, guys, I repeat. Firstly, make more music. I'm not saying get out of your comfort zone to not make more music. What I mean is get out of that comfort zone. You will realize that all of your songs are starting to sound very similar. You, you, you are using similar type of beats, similar type of instrumentation. Um, speaking of instrumentation, you could just change it up completely. So if you always start a song with a piano, if you're using a MIDI keyboard and you're playing a piano, you're using a piano sound, Change it up. Change it into a sound that, in your opinion, sounds horrible. You'll never, you personally feel that you'll never be able to write something to it. Use that. Use that. Um, use that. That. What's the word I'm looking for? That unease that you feel, and use that to create a new song. I mean, I've done it. Uh, for example, there's a song that was written by Ibrahim Inglis, which is actually going to be a single that I'm going to be releasing commercially to radio. It's called Cut So Deep. And when he gave me the song, I went into my comfort zone. And I sat down with a piano and a beat and bass and it had some strings and it sounds great. However, after sending him the, the demo of it, he loved it. But I said, listen, this sounds, I, I don't like the way this sounds. It sounds similar to other things that I've done. And he said, okay, then change it up. You know, it doesn't have to be a ballad or, you know, you decide what the tempo of the song must be. So what I did was I used, pardon, I used a sound that I would not usually use to create a song. And using just that particular pad or synth, I can't remember what it was. It just made the song sound so much different. And I got so excited because I didn't do anything fabulous. I just I just changed my approach. I got out of my comfort zone to make this song. Um, even in mixing and mastering, if you're a mixing and mastering engineer, you need to do the same thing. If all you are doing is mixing pop music, or all you're doing is mixing R&B music or hip hop music, you need to branch out. You need to look for different genres, different songs, different artists. Uh, I mean, there are so many songs online now where you can actually download the, um, you know, the stems, the separates, etc. And you can do your own mix of it. I mean, what I did was I went to each of the producers that I know, okay, not each and every one of them, but I went to a few who I know made music that I don't always make or I won't necessarily make very often. And I said, listen, this house track, or this dance track or this remix that you're doing can i do a mix of it if you don't mind i won't charge you it's just i'll send it to you use it don't use it doesn't matter and i did that and you know it it was a, a huge learning experience for me uh, i mean people ask me how i got into contact with um leah hart and jody jody over i actually Inbox Jody after Leah released her first single and I said hey I love the song if you don't mind do you think I could get the separate for it 
And the first question I got asked was, why? Does the, you know, does the release song not sound good? So I said, no, I'm just looking for new music to mix and master just to expand my repertoire and, you know, use it as a growth experience for me. So I did a mix of it and I sent it back to them, no charge. They liked what they heard and now we're doing work together. Uh, so guys, your, your comfort zone is both a good and a bad thing. Basically, the takeaway of this video is for you to find new ways of creating music, find new ways of doing things, especially on the especially on the creativity side, find new ways of doing things that you would do a certain way, whether it's changing up the sounds that you're using, uh, using different chord progressions, because what I do here, especially with new producers, it's just a whole lot of majors. It's majors and minors. You know, there are so many chords out there. Yes, there are only so many chord progressions out there. But there are different ways of changing it up to get a different sound. So, that's my story on the comfort zone. Getting into it. Should you stay in it? Is it good for you? Is it bad for you? So, now I want to move on to questions. Now... I think I got two questions this week. Two questions that I identified that I want to answer on this on this video. So this week I've got a couple of people who have asked me, who have sent me masters and mixes uh, of their tracks that they want to release, and they say, "How does this sound?" Now, guys, what you need to understand is if you mixed. If if your song has gone to mastering, there is something that you loved about that mix. You love that mix, right? Um, different mixing and mastering engineers will all give you different answers depending on the question that you are asking, right? So, for example, on the the one master that I received, it sounded fantastic. It it was it was a fantastic master. However, what I usually tell people is. Take this song and compare it to a commercial song that's out there that you like or that you use as a reference. Does it sound, you know, is there a difference, a sonic difference or a level difference when those songs are played one after the other? If the answer is yes and you are not happy with that change, then there's something that you need to change. And for this particular, for this particular um, person who asked me this question when I listened to the master I said look it sounds fantastic but when you compare it to the commercially released songs what they heard was that the low end didn't sound as thick as fat as punchy as the commercial tracks and my personal experience mastering other artists music is that it seems as though there is there's the preference is given to certain certain areas in the audio spectrum right guys if you're not technical i my apologies go google it, google it audio spectrum right so what i'll find is is that a song would have a really awesome baseline to it but then it sounds as though preference and detail and eq etc was only given to the bass and then you've got these high mids and highs, which I find is ignored a lot, right? So, the second thing that I tell people is, besides, you know, the low end not sounding as fat, because that's what I pick up, is, you know, we've got, you know, if you say panning left and right, right? So, le let's just call it left, center, and right. Use those areas, guys. What, what I find is, especially in South Africa, is that the center of the of the uh, of your your panning, or, or let's just call it spectrum, preference is given to the center, right? So guys are putting their kick, their snare, their bass, their lead vocal, whatever else they can, just in the center, and then. The left and right of the audio spectrum is sort of ignored and, and, and ignored quite a bit. Um, and then what you find is it's very loud in the center and very soft on the sides. And then all I would do is, for example, take a, 
um, I don't know, I know Waves has got something called the Wave Center where you can lift the size. All I do is lift the size and I say, listen, you listen to your song. And they say, wow, what did you do? I said, I didn't do anything. I just made the left and right side louder. So, guys, you need to, you know, the, 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 the detail and the, the, the preference that you give to specific elements in the track, you need to do that with everything. Right. If you look at any video that's out there on YouTube, any tutorial on mixing, they will tell you that, you know, getting your song louder, if that's what you want to do, is not one big move, but rather thousands of little things that you do that contribute to the entire song being louder. So the best advice that I've seen online is that, uh, and remember, I don't want to cover things that, 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 that you guys can YouTube or Google already. It, but the best advice that I've seen is when you're mixing your song, use a reference track. So switch from your mix to your reference song and see if they sound the same. Uh, I don't just mean in loudness. I mean in feel, low end, low mids, um, high mids, high end. Listen and see and, and listen for differences, right? And if they're the same, fantastic. And then the second thing is, Mix your song as though there is no mastering stage. So forget about mastering, right? Just mix your song and get it sounding fantastic. Right, so that was the one question um, that I got this week. And it was about listen to my mix, listen to my master. Why does it sound this way? Why doesn't it sound a different way? And then the second question that I got was actually from the competition winner, uh, Jody Lee. Uh, you know, after we had our first recording session for the cover song, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to let you know about just yet. It's such a fantastic song. Um, you know, once the session was over, I said, look, so how was your experience uh, recording? And she said, look, I've recorded before, but I've never done it at this level or following this type of process. She sort of just, you know, gone into people and then record one one take whether it was good or bad that's what they took um, I don't mean any disrespect and that may have been you know what they intended to do but she said you know how does an artist ensure that the producer is actually getting the best out of them right and it's a great question that 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 I have answered before but I want to answer it again guys it's all about the artist being professional and the producer being professional. Now, people's people's understanding of professionalism is different. So what I what I told her was that Jody, if you are unsure when you're recording something, I need you to tell me or any other producer that you are recording with that you would like to do it again. And what she actually realized was that as we progressed through that session, she automatically picked up when I was. I was telling her, this sounds great, but I think you can do better. About half an hour to 45 minutes in, she was she was telling me, stop, I think I can do that better. Let's try this. Let's try that. What do you think? Right? So, what, I, what my, my recommendation to her was, obviously the professionalism part, but also try new things. Be open and honest. If you're not happy with something, say, you want, say let's do it again. Uh, if you know you've made a mistake, even if the producer says it's fantastic, you tell that producer, keep it, but let me try another one. All right, so those are the two questions this week. Um, I'm so sorry. I um, look so tired. It's just been hectic in, in, in studio, uh, which I'm very grateful for. Um... So yeah, upcoming project, um, doing some more work with the Englishman, I've got a project with Jared that will probably start after his album is released and you know, all of the, the PR and stuff is done there. Um, I've got a remix of a Leah Hart track, I've got about nine songs of my own that I'll be releasing, I'm still deciding whether I should do like an EP or release it in batches of three, for example. I'm still deciding on how I want to do that. And then 
you know, yeah, mixing and mastering Jason Jewister's EP produced by the Englishman. Um, yeah, I'm just a lot of mastering work I'm getting now. Um, guys, tip if you if you if you are sending your mixes to a mastering engineer, if your mastering engineer is not giving you some mixing tips or things to consider next time they do a mix that they submit for master. Um, think I won't say think twice about it, but I mean everybody has, has has room to grow. So usually your mastering engineer would take your mix, have a listen to it, master the track, and there'll be something that you know they feel can be improved on. You know, internalize that, accept the feedback. It's not negative. It's just we want everybody to make great music. So it's got nothing to do with. You know, we're not saying the mix is the mix sounds bad. It's just next time try this or next time try that. Um, let's see. No, I think that's about it. That's about it, guys. Again, another live video where I'm so super super tired, same as episode nine. So thank you very much, guys. That was episode ten of the series. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Please don't forget that you can email me, DM me. If you've got my number, you can WhatsApp me. Visit my Facebook page uh, at GimmeMo85 or www.facebook.com forward slash GimmeMo85. You can follow me on Instagram. It's at Munib Khalant. Twitter, at Munib Khalant. Um, just to check on the progress, I post a lot of the, the things that I do on Instagram and then automatically to Facebook and my Facebook page. If you're interested in, you know, improving your work uh, or interested in doing some work with me, you can contact me on any of those social media platforms. Thank you very much, guys. Hashtag make more music. This has been episode 10 of the Gimme Mo Live video series. If you joined late, the topic was, um, you know, your comfort zone. Is it good for you or bad for you? I'll be posting this video to Facebook and then to YouTube as well. So you can check the video out. Contact me if you have any any questions that you'd like me to answer. Take care, take care guys. I'm going to go sleep now. I have to be up at 3.30 tomorrow to catch a flight. Oh, Red-eye flight to Durban. Take care, guys. Cheers, man. Bye-bye.